Fourth of July. Bless you, brother. Whew. Yeah. It's been a week, hasn't it? It's been a week. I'm glad we're here to talk about it today. Yeah. Right? Because it's been a week, and I think to talk about it, I actually took a few notes for today's sermon, guys. I think to talk about it is see what's happening in Washington, see what's happening around the country, what has been happening, right, that led us to this moment. And then where do we go from here? Uh, I'm going to start by reading Sonia Sotomayor's dissent because I think it's incredibly important to note what she says. I wrote it down. Chicken scratch, Dr. Cosby. But I wrote it down because I think she gets to the heart of what we're talking about pretty quickly. She says, affirmative steps are constitutionally necessary when mere formal neutrality cannot achieve Brown's promise of racial equality. Now, what does she mean by that? See, we're talking about all these legal terms up here. We make it real hard to understand, but it's, it's, it's more simple when you look at the history. See, we approved a 13th Amendment, as you know and you've talked about, Dr. Cosby. We approved a 13th Amendment that said we're going to get rid of slavery. But did that do enough? No. And by the way, we knew it. We knew it because the Congress in 1866 produced a report that said this is not enough. There is such deep-rooted prejudice and problems resulting from the, the denial of wealth, the forced labor, the lack of education, the denial of education through policy. We have to do more. So we did. And we passed a 14th Amendment. And in that 14th Amendment, we guaranteed equal protection under the law. Now, I say equal protection, it is vague and it is intentionally vague. We could have said this is colorblind equal protection. But that would ignore the 400 years of systemic racism that existed in this country. So they didn't do it. And then they started passing some laws. Things that created things like Howard University. Right? And then what happened? Here in this church, I don't need to tell you that progress is met with backlash. And Plessy versus Ferguson came about. It was about train cars, Dr. Cosby. It was about more than that. And separate but equal was created. The backlash of Jim Crow, right? As Dr. Cosby has said many times, I've heard him preach, we did not free slaves, we fired them. Right? And then we go forward to Brown, which Sotomayor talks about in 1954, where the Supreme Court said, no, separate but equal is in fact not equal. It ignores our history of racial inequality. And then she goes on to say, today the court concludes that indifference to race is the only constitutionally permissible means to achieve racial equality in college admissions. The interpretation of the 14th Amendment, that's what we just talked about, the 14th Amendment, equal protection. The interpretation of the 14th Amendment is not only contrary to precedent and the entire teachings of our history, but is also grounded in the illusion that racial inequality was a problem of a different generation. Wow. Entrenched racial inequality remains a problem today. That is true for society writ large, for Harvard and UNC, two institutions with a history of racial exclusion. Ignoring race will not equalize a society that is racially unequal. What was true in the 1860s and again in 1954 is true today. Equality requires acknowledgement of inequality. And there is a biblical basis for this. Right? Not just from Nehemiah, which Dr. Cosby has talked about, but in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 through 19, the Apostle Paul discusses reconciliation and says that through the blood of Christ, God reconciled the sins of the world. Right? He went on in Luke, right, chapter 19. <laughs> 
And we're talking about Zacchaeus. The only time he comes up in the Bible, by the way, Zacchaeus is up there in that tree. And he looks at Christ. And even though he has taken from people for too long, he comes down. He wants to be forgiven. And what does Jesus say? It doesn't say exactly this. But he says, you can't just say I'm sorry. You got to do something about it. You've got to pay back. You've got to reconcile fourfold what you've taken, if I'm not mistaken, Dr. Cosby. In the first book of the Bible, in the first book of the Bible, we see in Genesis the twins, Jacob and Esau, right? And they fight and they fight and they fight. And there's a lot that goes on with those two. But then they come back together and they say, I'm sorry. But they didn't reconcile and they couldn't live together. Right? When she says equality requires acknowledgement of inequality, we must reconcile, we must repair. When you look at the University of North Carolina, where only 8% of its students are black and 22% of the state of North Carolina is black, that is not equal, that is inequal. Right? When you look at what happened in states like California when they passed Proposition 209 that got rid of affirmative action, Ten years after that, in 2006, 4,852 students were admitted to the University of California, Los Angeles. Ninety-six were black. Ninety-six. In a state, in a city as racially diverse as California and Los Angeles. So we have to take these steps. Because we've seen it, right? We saw that when we got rid of slavery, it was met with Jim Crow. When we got rid of, of uh, segregation in our schools, right? it was met with mass incarceration. It was met with different policies. And the, the fear of this is that this bleeds into other things. That this bleeds into other things. Which is why we have to stand up. Which is why we have to say what must be done and then we must do it. And this is not a new concept. I wrote down this quote, Dr. Cosby. When talking about the Civil Rights Act, President Lyndon Baines Johnson at Howard University said, you do not take a person who for years has been hobbled by chains and liberate him, bring him up to the starting line of a race and then say you are free to compete with others and still justly believe that you have been completely fair. I do believe, as we've talked about already in church today, I know Dr. Cosby is going to give us the best word. As he died to make men holy, let us live to make men free. Let us repair what has been done. Let us reconcile what has been done with each other, but do it in an affirmative way where we recognize the millions of people brought over here against their will as slaves, tortured, forced to labor, denied everything from education to health care to basic rights. Then, through policy, discriminated against in everything from who you could marry to where you could live to whether you could get a bank loan to where you could go to school. And what policy has done policy must undo. And so this week was a tough week. It was a step backwards. Not the first time we've taken a step backwards, but not the last time we take steps forward. So I appreciate you all having me to talk about it today.